evening and welcome back to Sports Night in Auburn. My name is Mackenzie Collins. And I'm Mary Lee Oliver. Tonight we've got a lot to get to from the Auburn win on homecoming to a new hire for Auburn baseball. You're watching Sports Night in Auburn. this past Saturday. And if you like offense and points, this was a game you sure didn't want to miss. Eagle Eye was there to bring you the story. The Auburn Tigers turned their offensive lows around with a much needed blowout win against Kent State. The game plan for this game was run, run, run the football, and run the football they did. Auburn rushed for 467 yards behind the efforts of Jartavius Whitlow, Joey Gatewood, and Sean Shivers to name a few. Each had at least 100 yards rushing, the first time Auburn has had three 100-yard rushers since 1983. Kent State made it interesting in the second quarter when quarterback Dustin Crum threw a 53-yard bomb to Isaiah McCoy to cut the lead to four with 10 minutes left in the second quarter. Bo Nix did his part, throwing a beautiful ball to the streaking Eli Stove to put the game out of reach at 38-10 late in the third quarter. He added a rushing touchdown with a couple of good zone option reads showing the improvements G Coach Gus Malzahn has been echoing in his press conferences. Whitlow had a game to remember, bullying and bulldozing his way to two scores and 135 yards rushing. Joey Gatewood gave the fans something to be happy about, knowing if Bo ever went down, he would be someone the fans could count on, showing his speed around the outside to get past a couple of Kent State defenders for the score. Auburn gets another great win from the home crowd here at Jordan Hare Stadium, improving to 3-0 on the year and looks to continue their winning ways next week going into College Station against Texas A&M. Reporting live from Jordan Hare Stadium, my name is Tim Humphrey, Eagle Eye TV. The story within the game on Saturday was Auburn's ability to run the ball, and the man leading the charge was Booby Whitlow. Whitlow rushed 17 times for 135 yards and two touchdowns on Saturday, and with a seven-yard run in the first quarter. In his third carry of the game, became the 47th player to ever pass 1,000 career rushing yards in the Navy and Army. Whitlow led the way for an offense that rushed for a combined 467 yards and six touchdowns in the route of Kent State. A combined eight players with positive rushing yards for Auburn, and three went over the 100 yard mark. But running the ball isn't the only thing this Auburn offense can do. Freshman quarterback Bo Nix was proficient in his third start for the Tigers and second at home. Nix completed 12 of his 16 pass attempts for 161 yards and a touchdown on a flea flicker to Eli Stowe. As the weeks go on, the young gun looks more comfortable in, in this Auburn offense masterminded by Coach Gus Malzahn. And fans should be happy about that as the Tigers head into college station this weekend to take on Texas A&M. Nix was also effective on the ground as he carried the ball seven times for 40 yards and a touchdown to show his hands that he can do any passing As we mentioned earlier, Eli Stubb was Nix's favorite target of the night and hauled in the lone touchdown that didn't come on the ground for the Tigers. Stubb would bring in six passes on the night for 88 yards and the most mentioned flea flicker that would go in for the touchdown from 49 yards out. Stubb continues to prove that he is a vital part of the Auburn offense, finding ways to score and be effective each week, whether it be receiving or rushing. It seems like every week we're mentioning how an Auburn player is winning an SEC Player of the Week award. So why would we stop the tradition? Marlon Davidson was named SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week for the second week in a row after a performance which he tallied six total tackles and two and a half sacks against Kent State. On the season, Davidson has... 14 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, and two and a half sacks. Shifting gears, the Associated Press released their weekly poll on Monday. The top nine teams remained unchanged, with Auburn holding their ranking at eight, coming off their 3-0 start. The only change in the top ten came with Michigan falling outside to 11 and Utah taking their place at 10. Fans who have been to an Auburn home game so far this year might have noticed the new security feature put in place at Jern Hare. Eagle Eye did some work to see what they thought. I think it's probably a great idea with society and all the crazy things going on right now. It's probably a good idea. Well, I did hear there were long lines and people were frustrated because it took so long to get in because of the uh, metal detectors. But I think it's, you know, something that's going to start happening everywhere. Uh, we thought it was going to take like 
an hour. So we got there way too early and it went really fast. I felt like it wasn't super efficient, but that's okay. I just felt like it was kind of a cheap metal detector, but I guess it's good. They're there and yeah, we're safer. Sorry. I think it's good. I think it went a little bit quicker than it has been in the past where they've had to pat you down and search your boots and everything like that. And I think it definitely is an added safety measure that's needed. Coming up, we'll take a look at everything else happening on Auburn's campus. You're watching Sports Night in Auburn. We'll be right back. As a mom and an Olympian, I know the importance of getting to the finish line quickly. But quicker isn't always better when it comes to conversations about the dangers of underage drinking. General Marshall is right. You don't need to get the entire point across in one dinner or one car ride. Stick to those meaningful moments. A text or short conversation can go a long way. And be sure to use resources like asklistenlearn.org. They've got everything from conversation starters to facts about the dangers of underage drinking. So start the conversation today about saying yes to a healthy lifestyle. And no to underage drinking. I believe this is a practical world and that I can count only on what I earn. Therefore, I believe in work, hard work. I believe in education, which gives me the knowledge to work wisely and trains my mind and my hands to work skillfully. I believe in honesty and truthfulness, without which I cannot win the respect and confidence of my fellow men. I believe in a sound mind, in a sound body, in a spirit that is not afraid, and in a clean sport that develops these qualities. I believe in obedience to the law because it protects the rights of all. I believe in human touch, which cultivates sympathy with my fellow men and mutual helpfulness and brings happiness for all. I believe in my country because it is a land of freedom and because it is my home, and that I can best serve that country by doing justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly with my God. And because Auburn men and women believe in these things, I believe in Auburn and love it. The Dog's Way Home is the story of the extraordinary lengths a dog will go to in order to get back to their family. Every year, millions of dogs and cats end up in shelters and rescue groups. We found our Bella at a shelter in Tennessee. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover they're all pure love. <laughs> adopt pure love and help a shelter pet find their way home at the shelterpetproject.org. Welcome back. Over the weekend, Auburn soccer faced two tough opponents in Southern Mississippi and Samford. Eagle Eye was there on Friday night when the Tigers took on the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss. Tonight, the Auburn Tigers hosted the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles as they look to improve on their two-game win streak in the third game of their four-match homestand. The game started out slow as neither team scored in the first 42 minutes. Southern Mississippi put the first point on the board, gaining the lead late in the first half. The Tigers shot eight times in the second half in an attempt to overcome the deficit, but Southern Miss doubled their lead on a breakaway goal in the last minute of the game. Even though the Tigers outshot the Golden Eagles 15 to 6, they still fell short of a win. With a final score of 2 to 0, the Tigers lost their winning streak and fell for the first time at home this season. Oh, I thought we could do a lot better and I felt um, we were lacking in both our, our total effort out of the 90 minutes and our execution and, and both need to be better. The good thing is we can be better and we certainly had the opportunities and and um, you know we felt obviously all credit Southern Miss and the way they they defended was tremendous. We need to be better um, executing our game plan, and we need to be better with a total 90-minute effort. With the loss, the Tigers moved to three and three this season. Their next game will be home against the Sanford Bulldogs this Sunday, September 15th at 6 p.m. From Auburn Soccer Complex, this is Delaney Barrow, Eagle Eye TV. Coming off the loss on Friday night, Auburn welcomed in state rivals Sanford to the Auburn Soccer Complex on Sunday night. After a hard-fought game and three goals coming from each team, Auburn and Sanford battled to a draw after two overtime periods. The tie put the Tigers' season record at 3-3-1. Baseball season may be ending in the pros, but there's always news around Auburn baseball as Butch Thompson named former Tiger Blake Logan Director of Player Development on Wednesday. Logan was a member of the Auburn baseball team from 2014 to 2017 and was a three-year starter at catcher, appearing in 204 games. Logan completed his bachelor's degree in fitness, conditioning, and performance with a minor in sports coaching in May 2017 and earned his, bachelor's in his ma master's in adult education in 2018. Logan will be responsible for coordinating all aspects of video analysis, including player de development and scouting, 
and will handle all the team's effects behind the team's data analytics. Auburn Volleyball traveled to Fort Worth, Texas over the weekend to take part in the ADD Rand Cup against Miami and Texas Christian University. The Tigers took on Miami on Saturday in arguably their most balanced match of the season. The Tigers came away with a 3-1 win. Sophomore Tatum Shipes finished with her third double-double of the season, finishing with 13 kills and 10 digs. On Sunday, the Tigers took on the Horned Frogs of TCU. After five hard-fought sets, the Tigers would fall 3-2. The Tigers battled throughout, falling behind 2-1 before forcing a fifth set and falling 16-14. Coach Rick Nold said, I thought we battled and made good adjustments. I was really happy with the impact we were having there. Coming up, we'll take a look at everything happening this week in Auburn Athletics. Keep it, on, keep it here on Sports Night in Auburn. This is what high blood pressure looks like. Talk with your doctor to create a treatment plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. After 15 years of smoking, Eva Marie quit. There's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back. Let's take a look at everything happening in Auburn this weekend. On Thursday, Equestrian takes on the University of Tennessee at Martin in Martin, Tennessee at 10 a.m. The Tigers then take on Oklahoma State in Martin on Friday at 11 a.m. Auburn soccer takes on two opponents this weekend starting with the Kentucky Wildcats on Thursday at 6 p.m. in Lexington, Kentucky and can be seen on SEC Network. The Tigers then take on Old Dominion in Norfolk, Virginia at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday. Men's and women's tennis get ready to participate in the Groover Fall Invitational this weekend, playing matches on Friday. Then the men will travel to South Carolina for the South Carolina Invitational on Saturday and Sunday. Women's golf travels to Franklin, Tennessee on Friday to participate in the Mason Rudolph Championship, which will take place through Sunday. Auburn Volleyball hits the road again this weekend as they travel to Kalamazoo, Michigan to take on Western Michigan on Friday at 9 a.m. and IUPUI on Saturday at noon. And lastly, the big event this weekend as Auburn football travels to College Station to take on a division rival in Texas A&M on Saturday at 2.30 p.m. The game can be seen on CBS. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mackenzie Collins. And I'm Mary Lee Oliver. You can follow us on Twitter at EETV underscore sports, Instagram at Eagle Eye TV, and check out our website, eagleeyeauburn.com. For Eagle and good night.